Hey everyone, I'm Alfred, welcome back to Quake Scourge of Armagon. I hope for all the talking we're getting about Armagon, we're going to fight the guy. This is the level called the Gauntlet, which is a really good level in Doom. Well, I like it. I don't know if a lot of people do. Take that top off. Save back to the action. So ordinarily in a like playthrough of a game like this. Where they at? What, I didn't get that one? Okay. Let's switch to this thing. Well, not yet. What is your deal, dog? Something I will say about Quake, you actually cannot aim directly up. Oh, we're in River of Blood, that's gnarly. Love a good River of Blood. That guy Moses, who's alright? Supposed to stick with short controlled bursts, Al. Especially when the gun blows through its ammo this quickly, but that's okay. <sighs> Pizzazz. Man. When they said the gauntlet, they were not fucking around. Uh oh. Maybe we can do some stock up down here. Or maybe not. Woohoohoohoo! Yowza! I'm missing grenade launcher, Chan. Should have taken the small health first. Because now I don't get the big health. Now I only get the big health. Because the big health goes on top, and you can't heal if you've already. Uh... Accepted healing. Oop. Man, ain't you guys gnarly, huh? Oh, cool, this barrier. Back to the Blood River, I guess. Just lightly brushed my microphone with my beard, I don't know if you heard. And normally that's not a problem, but my beard's at a length where it just like kind of tickled me just a little bit. Now I want to itch my beard, but I shan't. <laughs> I like how it's still blue down here. Does it put me? Oh, here. That makes perfect sense. That's fine. I feel like too many of these, like, just kick you back to the main, like, lobby. And while sometimes that's good, I feel like there's a lot of goodies in the lobby that I missed. I'm uh, thankful for the quick return.
Okay. God damn it, there was a live one on the floor. I missed it. That's not the right gun. I'm fucking slipping here. Okay, there's one down. If I hit it, that's another down. Another. They wouldn't have to rig up a whole fucking teleporter if they just made the thing, like, tall enough. Like, are they trying to punish you with a time investment? Because I can just reload a save. Like, is it just punishing people who don't save right? Or regularly, I suppose? So one problem with this guy is if you're trying to run a gun past them, they're so physically wide, like they're actually like thick. And so it stops you from running past them. God. Fine, I'll swim back because I want to. Mother. And the teleporter goes right here, by the way. Like, if we look at where that must be... Yeah, it goes to just through the wall. Couldn't there just be a staircase there? Or is that too crazy? Ooh, boy. Hello? Dear customer, this call is from AT&T Direct TV. We were... <laughs> they said we'd like to transfer you to Poll Taker for a few more questions. They didn't actually ans ask me any questions. Whatever. <laughs> like, I heard E1M1 start, and I was like, oh, huh, weird. It was, it was just my phone. It's, it's not because they just recycled the track. Worry not, gang. Definitely tag myself there. It's worth it. I've got the health. Alright, silver key. Now we can sprint back. Man, that is so just the fucking Dark Souls moment laugh. Like, I know that it's like a, a definitely a stock sound. But like, it's so iconic, I really don't think I can hear it as anything else. Ooh, 
that was so cool. Okay. So, yeah. Ordinarily, by the way, the way that one would do an LP or something like this. That's what I get for trying to be cool with this. Oh god. Ordinarily, for an LP of this, you would do it all in one go. But you would also do it on Nightmare Mode. While I am, you know, a big fan of id and their games and the way that games were developed... Uh, I must say, I'm arguably more of a casual player. I regularly load and save. Am I out of his range? Because if so, that's pretty cool. Oh yeah, also, the reason I answered that spam call is because I was hoping it would be somebody that I can make fun of. Whoa, that's a... Ah, whatever. Oh boy. What? Fresh hell is this now? Hallelujah. Hello. Ha! <laughs> okay. down here. Oh, this is a shortcut, eh? Don't have any cells, can't use my big wham. Armagon awaits. That's definitely the final boss. All the kills? That's nice. And two secrets. Yeah, I only really get in and, like, find every secret if I'm, like, Go and just absolutely ham on a game. I'm like skating here. This is what was happening on that elevator earlier. I guess your armor got, huh? Whoa! It just looks like a thin shambler. But it's on mecha legs. I guess that makes sense considering that he's like got a lot of factories and industry and shit. Gnarly. He leaves his walker behind. Kind of like a 209. Is that good? Okay, that was the big portal that he was using. Now I use the small Quake Man portal. Congratulations, Armagon. After the last echoes of Armagon's death, Death yell fade away. 
you breathe a heavy sigh of relief with the loss of his magic. Armagon's fortress begins to collapse. The rift he created to send his... What the hell does that say? Grizzly... Mooks? To send his grizzly mooks through troops. It says troops. The rift he created to send his grizzly troops through time slowly close and seal itself forever in the chads, what the, in the chaos that ensues, a wall collapses, revealing one remaining time portal. With your chances to escape rapidly growing slim, you race for the portal, mindless of your destination. Flash of light, find yourself back at Command HQ, safe and sound. Really, really difficult to see there. Congratulations, you're victorious. The minions of Quake have once again fallen before your mighty hand. Is this the last you will see of Quake's hell... Quake's hellions? Yep, that's fair. Only time will tell. Come see me in the sequel, says Quake's minions. And then, yeah, this is the new, uh... This is the new credits, as of the, uh, HD version. So! Quake, huh? Very, very good expansion. I don't know if it's better than the main game, um... Uh, it's more Quake, though, which is always good, you know? I'm a big proponent of, you know, having more game to play. And I've got to say, this game is a uh, good deal, if nothing else. Um, I don't know if I would come out and say it's a bargain and everyone should get it, but it is pretty damn good. Uh... How much, how much is Quake HD? Let me check the stem. Store page. Um, it'll go on sale for every Quake Con, definitely. And it looks like it's just 10 bucks, which is pretty sweet. Uh, oh, they added co-op, yes. Fuck yeah, they even have dedicated servers. Holy shit. Expand your experience. Oops, bumped a mic. Sorry. Expand your experience with free, curated, fan-made, and official mods and missions such as Quake sixty four. Really interesting. Because um, Doom sixty four was originally like referred to, and I believed it to be a like remake of the original Doom just on N sixty four. But as I found out recently, it totally isn't. And the reason that I only found that out recently was because it was not available. Uh, it was only on N64. And Nintendo didn't really have a lot of interest in porting it because it's an m rated game. Jerk Gustafsson. Nice. Uh, yeah, like, it, it's just a m rated game. So they were like, whatever, it can, you know, whatever, we don't really do that. But when um, uh, when Doom six, uh, 2016 came to N64, nope, came to Switch, they were like, hey, maybe we'll port Switch, you know? Because, you know, this game is languished on the N64, maybe we'll bring it to the Switch. You know, that would make a lot of sense, considering that we probably should have done that earlier. But now that the, the main Doom is on there, and we're going to get Doom to run on the Switch as well, you know... Now the Switch can be your Doom machine, and it can have every Doom, and you can take Doom on the go, and that's cool, because there's no other way to play Doom on the go. Uh, now we have the Steam Deck, but you know, not anyone has, almost no one has that, so. But because of that port to Switch, they were like, hey, can anyone else get into that? And Idsoft was like, hey, you know what, why don't we? And so yeah, Doom 64 War was finally ported, and I got a chance to, like, see it for the first time, and like, 
it's not a remake of the original Doom at all. It's totally its own thing. Despite the fact that it's on the N64, and almost N64 game tries to use the console to break into 3D, Doom still has the... I think it still does sprites. Um, there might be a few things that aren't, but yeah, for the most part, it's just sprites. Um... And they're all original sprites for uh, Doom 64. Um, so some people hacked out those textures and just put them elsewhere, and you can just port them into Doom like a texture pack, and you can see what the original Doom would look like. Um, I think for some things you need to use a source port and a WAD, like, dedicated for that, because there are a lot of textures that might just break. But yeah, um, I might play Doom 64 for the channel. I, I'm, I've still been meaning to play Doom uh, here and there. Um, it'll be turning 30 in two years, which would be an awesome time for a Doom retrospective. But as, you know, as of right now, it's December, um, which is to say, when I record this, it's not, but it's getting uploaded in December. So if you're watching it now, Merry Christmas, upcoming. Uh, and if you're watching this and the replay, you know, this was uploaded in December, which is about when Doom came out. So it would normally be when I would want to do a, you know, a Doom look back. Because I can do it right for the 30th anniversary, and that would be fun. Uh, I'm going to sit through the credits this time, because I think they're the same for every game. And what's more, I saw credits for Dissolution of Eternity and... Yeah, I'm seeing a lot of I'm seeing a lot of uh, commonalities uh, because I also saw a lot of these names when I beat it when I beat Quake in Nightmare Mode. So if these are the same credits every time, then we can just skip them next time. Um, so what's coming up for us? We are done with Quake. And we're done with Scourge of Armagon. And coming up, we have the Dimension Trilogy. Which is... Why did I say that? Because I, it's because I misread it. We have Disillusion of Eternity, and then Dimension of the Past, and then Dimension of the Machine. Um, wow, this came out a, a month after the first expansion. Uh, Dissolution of Eternity did. But probably because it had its own developer and they could just have them make... You know, they didn't have to have the teams work together or anything. Uh, uh-oh. So this one only has two episodes. It has the introductory and then it has Hell's Forces, which has seven levels, which is good, and then Quarters of Time. Which has eight levels. Okay. So it looks like it'll be shorter, but not actually that much shorter in comparison. And it has a lot more enemies. It has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven new enemies and seven new bosses. Wow. Uh, and things have alt fires as well. Whoa. Oh, apparently this this game expansion received favorable reviews, higher than the first expansion, but negative because the pack was so difficult. Oh boy. Uh, and the composer is the same as uh, the first expansion by Ji Hoon Huang, um, whose name I don't recognize. But that's okay. Um, and I think he did the same for the first one. Oh, Dimension of the Past was developed by Machine Games, third company on it. Uh, and it actually came out for the game's 20th anniversary. And it was in the Quake port, and it's downloadable for free. Um, interesting. And it has no episodes, but it just has... 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight main levels. Okay, so it'll probably be shorter again. And then Dimension of the Machine that came out very, very recently. Uh, it looks like it's a lot, a little closer to the original one. Um, there are very few levels per episode, but there are way more episodes. Interesting. So it looks like there's a prologue. There's three in the first episode, two in the second episode, two in the third episode, two, two in the final level. Wow. So another 12 levels. Okay. Uh, interesting. Not really what I would expect. Um, though I am kind of sad to say, this sort of, like, way of releasing games kind of stopped, um, in the 2000s, uh, because people became way more enamored with, like, multiplayer, and so releasing new expansions for games like this was, like, less and less common every time a game would come out um until eventually i think the only thing that was really releasing new story content and new single player levels like this was maybe half-life some indie games i can't think of any game that really worked like this and you can even see it with the quake expansions because like two quake expansions came out right away and this one was half as short as the main game and it looks like the next one is of a similar length half-life uh, half-life came out a little after that, um, and it, it, its expansions are all like two hours long, and yeah, like two to four hours long, depending on the expansion. Um, call it three on average. And so, like all the expansions added together, are maybe about the length of the main game. Um, but they all add a lot more weapons, levels, enemies, a lot of cool shit. Um, and then you look at Quake 2, Quake 2 has, what is it, I think it only has two episodes, uh, two expansions? Uh, yeah, Reckoning and Ground Zero. Yeah, and there are more multiplayer maps in the first Quake 2 expansion than there are single player maps. Uh, and then you look at Quake 3, it's got one real expansion, and Quake 3 wasn't single-player to begin with. Ugh. And then you look at Half-Life 2, and Half-Life 2 had, like, the one, uh, the one episode, and then the two episode, and those are the expansions, and then those stopped coming out altogether. And then Portal was kind of the fourth episode that we never got. But yeah, that's that's one reason that I really do enjoy going back and playing games like this, because, like, it is such a different feeling of... I'm slouching over, by the way, don't mind me. Ugh, I really should be sitting like this all the time. But it's such a different feeling for game development, game design, and how games are released. Um, and, like, I don't... I, I can't exactly say that I miss it, because I wasn't... Uh, playing a lot of video games at this time. Because, um, like, I had a PC, such as it is. It didn't really run games very well, but shortly after I started using the internet regularly, or really at about the same time, the modern Let's Play was invented. Slow Beef did the first real Let's Play where, you know, you're not doing a walkthrough, it can be, but it doesn't have to just be a walkthrough. And you can just, you know, have a good time with a game you like. Um, and because it is easiest to record something on PC and then upload it to the internet through your PC, uh, a lot of the games that I saw Let's Plays of were single-player PC games. Um, and so that's how I got a lot of Half-Life and a lot of Quake and a lot of Doom to me. And then also Doom... It's pretty damn simple to run, so I could play Doom, but I digress. 
Um, but yeah, so, like, I wasn't really playing a lot of video games at this time, but, like, around 2006, at the very, very end of this era, when almost everyone had stopped, uh, but people were waiting for Half-Life 2, Episode 2, and Portal. Um, you know, they had a lot of easy, accessible discussion about this sort of thing, and so, like, I, I got easily accustomed to it just because I picked it up, and, like, I don't have nostalgia for it, but I miss it in the way that I would miss, like, how do I put this? I don't know how I put this. I miss it because, not because I was in it and it stopped, but I miss it because I missed the whole thing, you know? I didn't really have a lot of exposure to this at the time. But yeah, this episode ran a little short, so I decided to just ramble at the end because, like, I do kind of got to focus in hardcore when I'm playing these. It's why I sometimes said it's a normal or easy. Uh, because, like, when I was playing Quake in my off hours uh, at that coffee shop last night, because, yes, it's still the same day. You can even see I'm wearing the same thing. Um, you know, playing Quake in my off hours, I said it's a nightmare. And uh, I've, beaten, I've beaten Quake, Doom 1, Doom 2... And kind of Doom 2016 on the hardest difficulties. The thing about Doom 2016's actual hardest difficulty is that it's the hardest difficulty, but it deletes your save. And that's called Ultra Nightmare. Um, and you have to beat the game in one sitting in one go. I haven't done that. I've beaten it in regular Nightmare. Um, so theoretically I could beat the game in Ultra Nightmare. I would just need to do everything I did in one try perfectly. And you have to start from completely fresh. You can't go in with your upgraded equipment from the other ones. But that's okay. Sue chef and chef assistants. Sorry, I just looked at that. What the hell? Um... But yeah, I'll play more Quake expansions. Uh, I don't know if they'll come out now. I might wait a little bit in between them. Um, I'm thinking about playing Marathon because people loved it when I played Marathon. Um, and if you didn't see my uh, my playthrough of Marathon, it was really fun. Uh, and if you want to cut the shit, go buy Marathon yourself. And by buy, I mean download it for free off the internet. Because Bungie made it when they were still a really cool company and didn't microtransaction you for your blood. Uh, so yes, you can just get a hold of every marathon game for free. Just, that's it, for free. Um, what's more, you can also get a nice modern source port that makes it look a lot better to play. Because otherwise, it, you know, it's, it's money. It looks like, you know, normal Doom running uh, without a source port. But yeah, if you're craving some good old classic, uh boomer shooters like this if you got 10 bucks to burn this one's great um but it goes on sale kind of regularly uh and you can definitely assure that it'll go on sale for quake Run because you know originally that was just id's conference like comic-con is for all comic books and really all nerd shit or like an anime convention would be Quake was originally just for Quake games, and then it was for all the id games, and then it was for PC games. Um, and then when Bethesda bought, well, Zenimax, but, you know, the company that owns Bethesda then bought the company that owns Quake. QuakeCon became Bethesda's, and now it's kind of their thing. And so if you want to get a Bethesda game, uh, waiting for QuakeCon and getting it on sale is a good is a good pick. Um, that's how I got Quake 2 and 4, which I will also play sometime. Uh, apparently, Roy Campbell, um, apparently, Quake 1 and 2 have pretty much the same aesthetic and kind of like, you know, opposing force. You know, you fight the old gods and their servants, you know, these little fox down here. Uh, apparently Quake 4 is completely, completely different 
enemy combatant. You're fighting aliens, and you have, like, an alien war. Um... And, like, you would think they would call it something else, but maybe they couldn't think of a different, like, single-syllable title. Because consider what all of the id games are called. Wolfenstein. And then Doom. Quake. Rage. You know, that's what they call them. Um... But yeah. If you sat through my original Quake LP and all of this... Uh, thank you for my rambling. It's a lot of bullshit, but it does mean a lot. Uh, I'm happy to do this. I have a lot of fun. I have a lot of fun just sharing my, my thoughts about these things. Uh, but I, I, I should really be doing them over gameplay and not credits. But uh, I don't want to skip the credits because I normally don't do that in the game. But holy shit. Like, even though these people didn't actually work on Quake... like. The only people that you need to cite here are the id staff at the time of this game's development, the staff of Hypnotic Games and the other people who made the expansions, and then the Bethesda staff who handled porting it and, and getting it to run in HD, which honestly could be like, what, two guys? Like, Quake Spasm was made by a guy. Doom source ports have been coded by single people. I don't really think the people at Zenimax Benelux, wherever the fuck that is, actually helped, uh, you know, get Quake running for a modern PC. Somehow I don't believe that. Uh, pardon my rambles again, but I'm going to cut the episode because I don't think we're... I don't think we're going to run out of titles here. Oh, maybe. The localizations are coming up. Oh, my God. Uh, I'm going to cut the episode. We're, 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 not any, we're not anywhere near. Uh, but I've been Alfred. This has been Quake. Quake's first expansion, Scourge of Armagon. Uh, which I guess means that it's titled around me, which is kind of interesting. I'm the Scourge. You know, I am the, the whip that breaks open Armagon's back, and he wasn't really a hard guy anyway. I guess he kind of relies on the army. But yes, I'm the Scourge of Armagon now, I suppose, and this has been Quake, the Scourge of Armagon. Uh, thank you all for watching, and if you're still here, sitting through all of the dumb bullshit I've been talking about. Uh, oh, we're at the special thanks! Maybe I'll just fade out my camera. Um... But yeah, I've been Alfred. This has been Quake. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.